But let me ask you right from the outset, what does prosperity mean to you? I have no, I, I have no idea. The, the cool thing is, if I think about it, I'll, t- it'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell you what my head thinks prosperity is. But if I notice in the moment, where's the richness in life? The richness in life right now for me is I have developed a lifestyle. You have a lifestyle where you and I can go, hey, let's hook up, have a chin wag, and bless the world. So in this moment, we have freedom of time. We've got freedom of experience. And we've got freedom to share the richness that we are. So what's prosperity in this moment? In this moment, my experience of prosperity is having that freedom to give that freedom to share and that freedom to simply uh, sit down with someone who I, I hope that becomes a long-term old friend, oh, uh, not just a new friend. So that's what I got. That's terrific. A lot of people I see on your uh, in your groups and in your videos uh, where people uh, respond to you with emails and letters and questions, it, it, it is a lot focused on money. People are hooked on prosperity, meaning money. Are they wrong? <laughs> And I'll tell you what prosperity means again in a different way, right? Since you brought it up this way, money is speed. Yeah, we want what we really want is speed speed of being able to say yes, speed of it being able to say no, speed of being able to do anything. And when, when I think about where did money come from, money came from because when you and I first met, you were overseas. And at some point, you did manifestingmasterycourse.com. And if we didn't have this thing called money, you'd, it would have to, the conversation would have gone, hey, 20, I want to do your course. All right, Mike, whatever you trade. Oh, you've got a goat. That's wonderful. Well, how are you going to get it from where you are to me? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll trade it to another guy for some apples. And then you know, sooner or later, I'll get something that I want. And, and without money, trade was slow. With money, money became, money came into existence because we discovered speed is good speed is nice how fast do you share a smile with your daughter how fast do you share a smile with your wife why do people argue they think it's about money but it really this is all coming down to money is speed we just get to explore how can i in lesson 34 out of the prosperity pack that you mentioned. Uh, that's the one where Neville talks about the boundless forest. If you must spend money, spend it as though it were a dry leaf and you the owner of a boundless forest. What if you've lived your whole life like that, letting your yes be yes, letting your no be no, letting your love be lovely, no editing, just letting it move. The movement is economy. If everybody hoards their and hoards or hides their money, there's no economy. Movement is economy, and that's with money, and that's with anything. I read uh, that it wasn't always this way for you, and that in your past, you, like many of us, probably most of us, who pursue what we think is wealth for the reasons that we think we want wealth, Money specifically, money, the stuff that pays bills, the stuff that we buy our groceries with, money, that you used to read the How to Get Rich, How to Get Money books. Absolutely. You write about that in a post, which I, could you expand on that experience, please? I, I, I grew up, uh, I was poor. My mom and dad split up when I was a kiddo. I grew up on welfare in the US, which basically means like, for some reason, the family split up, can't work, needs money, that kind of thing. We got food stamps, all that stuff. And of course, I wanted more. I wanted something different. I wanted to be able to you know, have cool clothing and stuff like that. So I took newspapers. I read Think and Grow Rich. Uh, I was ashamed to do that stuff, by the way, because I thought only poor people read stuff about how to make money. And then I discovered the wealthiest man in town, Old Edwin, uh, he was by far the richest man in town, and I rolled up on him one day, and he's reading the same book. And and I and I discovered then, it's not just about money. Money's a byproduct. Money is speed. But Edwin was an old slow fella. Edwin just sat around and tended his garden, and he had a little greenhouse. But I realized now, uh, being able to take Edwin his newspaper, being able to share a cup of tea with him once in a while. 
that exposed me that to that whole thing of there's a richness here. A lot of people say Edwin's the the wealthiest guy in town, but he was also probably one of the richest because he owned his life, he owned his time, and he cared. I read that just this morning, the the story that you're sharing about your friend Edwin, and I'm going to share the link to that post of yours in the show notes so that our viewers and listeners can uh, drop down into the show notes and uh, and see some more about that. Uh, and there's also some information about your one of your courses, which is the Prosperity Pack. It's the Neville Goddard Prosperity Pack. I think you refer to it as the Prosperity Pack. What are uh, what is the, our listener who goes to that link and clicks on the link about the prosperity pack and invests in it? Oh, I'm going to come back to that word invest because yeah, yeah. That's, that's a very important word in the vernacular of Mr. 2020 and wife Victoria, invest as opposed to buy or spend. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what is our viewer uh, going to expect to experience when they invest in the Mr. 2020 prosperity pack? I I would suggest they're going to be challenged because what we've done so far has got us to where we are and you get to explore something different to get to someplace different. It, it's, it sounds so elementary, but it is. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. So right here, I have my original copy. I put it together. I had uh, staples or office works, whatever we call it in this country, printed out. Uh, you can't see it. What a bugger. But uh, but I but I actually have this printed out. It's got a coffee stain on it. It's got scribbled notes inside because I took the time to print it. And the reason I mention this is <clears throat> a lot of people buy a lot of courses. And way back at the beginning of this version of my internet experience, I decided I would not be the guy who has people buy courses and not use them. So when people get this, I always tell them, hey, Mike, print this out. If you can, get your local office store to bind it like a book. Because if you do that, you might actually read it. You might actually underline it. You might actually make it yours so that it starts to fall apart. I had, I had to tape mine together again and glue it together. And the reason I mention all this is the more real, the more rich. The, the pack has recordings in it and a PDF. You can listen to them. You can print it out and scribble things. But the biggest part with the little lessons inside is that they're little. So you do them. They're, they're, I tell you to print them so that you'll make them yours by scribbling notes inside. And, and that's the big thing because we can input all day. We can listen to you – know, I love podcasting. I'm like you. I've got like 2.7 million listens right now. Mm. Uh, just had 7,000 listens yesterday, all-time record, right? That thrills me because people are listening. What really th thrills me – are the handfuls of emails here and there that come in every day. Hey, I just listened to this episode. I love what you do. I think you're a moron. I don't care. I just, as soon as there's dialogue, now there's difference. And that's the thing that I love about a pack like this. If you actually do something with it, if you do the attitude money exercise, if you explore you with it, your life has to change. If you just buy it, hey, I made some money. I want you to change. I want you to change to the point where you got to come here and give me a visit. That's that. That's the whole thing. To me, this is about finding family, richness of experience, sharing what life is all about. Unashamedly, I want the viewer or the listener to tap into Mr. 2020's work. I want you, talking again, 20, just directly to our listener, to our viewer, I want you to know what I've been able to know since studying how 2020 teaches the, the law of attraction, manifestation, whatever terminology you want to put to it, how Neville Goddard used to teach, hook into 20's um, teachings and watch what happens. Now, back to this word, invest. You say, 20, that you and Victoria, your wife, uh, you don't buy, you invest in in your life what's the difference between thinking about buying and spending and thinking about investing you know <clears throat> boy there are so many ways to look at that uh, so today i'm going to go buy fish for lunch and victoria is making this uh 
asparagus meal. Uh, it's with eggs and cheese and stuff. I don't know, souffle, is that what that's called? I have no idea. But it's really yummy. But I'm going to go buy fish today. And I'm buying fresh fish. I'm buying ocean fish. And I don't care the cost. And here's what I mean. One of the things I notice is when people spend money, there almost seems to almost always be a, something with scarcity that shows up. This fish is a two dollars cheaper than that fish. That other place has it for less of a price. You know, whatever. There's something weird that goes on. All I know is my desires are divine in origin. I want to feel a certain way. I want to experience a certain meal today, and and so I've already decided what the fish is and where I'm getting it. And I don't care about the price. When, whenever you spend money, <clears throat> you tend to spend it on commodities. Uh, and so then the price of petrol matters. The price of milk matters for most people. Mm-hmm. Because that's a commodity. That, that's something where people tend to buy by price. On the other hand, quality of life. I, I'm not concerned with how much fish I buy or how much it costs. I'm more interested in in what's the richness of experience while I'm eating it, while I'm digesting it, while my body takes it in and uses it for what my body uses it for. And for me, that's the big thing with investing. What's my experience going to be? I'm I'm going to run with feeling it real since you brought it up. Mm. When Neville Goddard taught to experience a scene that implies your wish is fulfilled, my definition of scene at this point is a scene is how you experience what you experience. And so when I imagine it's five o'clock in the afternoon and I am highly energized, highly focused, finishing my work day after having taken a nap after lunch, yada, 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 how do I feel? And whenever I nail that experience, how I experience what I experience at five o'clock, that's when I feel like, oh, the fish, the fish was so good. It's not cheap shit fish. It's the fish that I desire today that I get. And that to me is that whole thing. You're, you invest for experience. You spend because it's a commodity. You, know, you, you, you got to buy petrol for your car. And what I do is I take that spending even with the petrol. And I, I've got an old BMW. I love it. I call it the dog park mobile. But I still enjoy my car. Mm. So I could spend money on petrol. Or I could do what my friend Vince told me years ago, always buy the premium, always buy the premium petrol for your, you know, the BMWs run better on that. So I always buy the premium. So even if I have to spend money, I notice how can I have a better experience? I'm going to love my car. Complicated answer in a way, but not that's at all. what I got. No, not at all. And uh, when our viewer or listener, uh, has a chance to replay and listen or to you again, they'll, they'll hear the wisdom in that. Uh, because I want to bring something else in here. On uh, one of your Facebook groups, of which I'm a, a member, uh, you post almost daily one of these beautiful lunches that you've just described. Every day. Every day. Now, you, you, you do that for a reason and as a metaphor which links into part of your answer, isn't yeah. it? Or Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a few things I want people to get. I'm a real guy. So you'll never see me do an ad, a you know, paid advertisement where I've got my three swimming pools and my four wives and my six Bentleys and all that crap. I want people to see I'm a real guy just like you. I want people to say, to see this is my richness of lunch with my wife. Mm. When I met her, she worked a job. When I met her, we, I started building this kingdom here. Now we both work from home. And it's really not work, it's play. Yeah. But we both get to share lunch every day, a yummy lunch that we really, our food is an investment. It always is. And, and it's that thing, once you, once you decide, I am an investor, you'll find yourself investing everywhere in life. And you'll find yourself not worrying about how much do I have to spend. Here's something else that now comes to mind. I'm arcing back a little bit to our viewer and our listener who is reading a How to Make Money book or they've bought a How to Make Money course or they're sure. doing something on this, this mindset of I'm going to, I want to get rich, which implies they're not prosperous and rich. They're not already. Yep. You refer to it as anti-prosperity. 
I think that's how you refer to it. Um, so can you just expand on what you meant when you write, write that, wrote that blog post uh, about anti-prosperity? Wow. Anti-prosperity has you thinking, how can I live within my means? So if I make $100 a week, $100 a day, $100, whatever it is, let's say you know you have $100 coming in, and you start thinking in terms of how can I spend less than that? And suddenly you start thinking in terms of what can I settle for? And as soon as you start going for what can I settle for, uh, life just becomes a struggle. Um, On the other hand, with, with prosperity, you get to divorce time from money. So you get to discover money is speed. And, and, I, and I, one of the examples I use is that if, I, if you take seven hours and you write an ebook and you sell it for $7 and you sell one copy, you made a dollar an hour. If you sell two copies, you made $2 an hour. When you get up to 10,000 sales, that's a, that's a lot of dollars per hour. Mm. That's $10,000 an hour. And the average person goes, well, there's nothing that I could write about. I bet there is. Mm. And, and, and that's the beauty of things because anti-prosperity has you going, what are my means? How can I live within my means? And it t- takes the attention off of you. As far as I can tell, almost everybody I talk to, they've got some song, some music, some message, some dance. They've got something in them that they want to express, that they want to share, that they want to explore. And they don't do it because they don't have the money or the time, and, and they shut down. Versus you, here you and I are sharing a dance, your message, my message. Mm-hmm. Your, 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 your media, my media. You know, it's, you know, my, my quote unquote intention with this is once you put it up, I'll blast it out to my people because I want my people to find you. And, and, and this is how everybody wins because your message is different than my message. They, they overlap, but your message and my message are different. Mm-hmm. Your magic and my magic are different, but we complement each other which means we appreciate each other, which means we both just our dance together has us increase in value. It's so dynamic, but it doesn't happen if we're trying to live within our means versus radio. I'm going to start letting it shine and see where it goes. I'm going to fan this little coal into a flame that, that warms everyone. See, the, the language, the vernacular is simple and easy to listen to and easy to understand, but the wisdom and the depth of, the, the depth of wisdom and the profundity in, in, in what you say and what you express when you teach and write is, is such. I, I can't help. It must sound like it's a paid commercial when I say I want people to delve into Mr. 2020's work. It, but this is a podcast. This is not a paid commercial. I'm just an absolute fan of of your work 20 as you know and I want more people to to delve deeper and I know that there'll be people listening who know of your work they they read your posts they might have even bought one of your or invested in one of your courses but they haven't really dived deep and that's what I want people to think again about am I really diving deep into this stuff so here's just a question before we wind up a little bit 20 uh the person who now this is linked in with feel it real uh, and the experience of prosperity but but there's something that you talk about that that uh, Neville Goddard teaches which is uh, to deny the senses uh, or, or or how's it expressed again to deny the deny what's happening in the physical world or something I, I love the particulars here we deny the evidence of the senses that's it now, now what's cool with that when we deny the evidence of the senses, that doesn't mean you walk out in front of a bus. Abdullah, Neville's teacher, told him to walk as though he were in Barbados whenever yeah. he was in New York City. Neville didn't walk out in front of a bus. We know this because Neville continued to live. Now, here's what's cool. I don't deny the senses. I do deny the evidence of the senses. Because I, if I sit down and I, and I see whatever I see or I hear whatever I hear, that's what I see and what I hear. But like a judge, 
I get to go, that's not evidence. That's echo. I echo always follows. So no, ma no matter what's happening in the physical, uh, I don't care. Because I will either use that, like the streetcar system, I'll use that to amp things up, or I'll just go, radio. that's what I imagined before. Of course, that's what's showing up there. But it's not evidence. I'm evidence. The state that I'm in is evidence. And that's what produces the results. The person who has a bill, like, for example, an electricity bill here in the mo here, at, here <laughs> right? And they don't, they don't have the funds to pay it, and it's I, overdue. So the evidence that the that the censors uh, are experiencing is, I've got the bill, the overdue notice has come, and I don't have the money to pay it. And I just do think about the person in that situation. How do they? How do they persist? With the, with the concept and get past that and not get sucked into the vortex of this is all bullshit. Uh, so, 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 so back in my old experience, the bills would end up on the fridge so you could feel like shit whenever you went to get something to eat. And they all had SON on them. SON was shut off notice, right? Not a fun place to be. Mm. So I started noticing. It, let me ask you a question. If I could teach you how to get a 10% return on your investment every three months, would you do it? Yes or no? Yes. Of course you would. It's called your electric bill. I just paid mine yesterday. So we got our bill from Red Energy. I opened it up, and it's like $1,000. Why? Because it's $1,000. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm not going to fret about it. I'm not going to figure out what light bulb can I turn off or whatever. I've got a $1,000 electric bill. I could show it to you, but it's not handy anymore. Because here's what happens. Halfway down the electric bill on the right-hand side is a little box that says pay now for a 10% discount. Mm. That's a hundred bucks. Mm. I'll, I'll take that money. That's an investment. And so what I started doing years ago was imagining paying the bills early so I get that investment back. It's a tax-free 10%. Not bad, right? Yeah. And, and that's the fun thing because you know, if, if you're getting shut off notices now, just look at that bill and imagine paying it and with the attitude of, I just put a hundred bucks in my pocket. That's a lot of fish. Isn't that's a it? Yummy, that's a yummy, yummy steak. I love it. There's the fun. Yeah, that's the fun. The dance is the, the dance. The, the, the music is about to stop here, uh, 20, and the dance is about to end because, uh, as I always say, time flies when you're having fun. And I've, I've enjoyed this little chat with you, Twenty, once again. I'm going to include the links, uh, Twenty, in the show notes so that our viewer and our listener can click through and experience what I've experienced and what I do experience and some of which uh, you mentioned about the story of your friend Edwin and uh, anti-prosperity and what that means. And then on the same page of the uh, – it's a Facebook – no, it's not. It's a web page uh, post. Uh, there will be a link because I know there's a link there. Uh, so if somebody, uh, if, if the viewer or the listener uh, chooses to invest in the Prosperity Pack, what's the price of it, by the way? Let's talk about uh, price. It is still $47. I'm too lazy to change it. Uh, $47 for the Prosperity Pack sounds like a very, very good investment to me. Twenty, thank you very much for Thank sharing you, your wisdom and your profundity and your your metaphors and, and your, everything else and your fun and your smile and your hat and, and the whole <laughs> lot. And, and I hope you and, and I know you and Victoria there and your dogs are going to love your lunch today and I look forward to seeing the picture of it. And, I'll, and when I see it today on Facebook, I'll think back to this little conversation we've had th this morning, our time. Beauty, Mike. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.